Hello, I'd like to make the argument against hysteria. We have just come out of a two-year two period of the COVID lockdown where the press and the government coalesced to ensure that alternative voices were shut down, any voices contrary to the lockdown, to mandatory vaccination, to anybody who, who would question the idea of people being deserving of the freedom to go to work and see their family, etc. Anybody, any scientist bringing up hard truths about herd immunity, about the low infection fatality rate, were basically shut down. Called conspiracy nuts, crazies. Um, their jobs were threatened. Doctors were thrown on the street, uh, thrown out of the medical council in Ireland. Very fine doctors. Uh, and now here we are, just two years afterwards, in the middle of what I would definitely call hysteria about the Ukraine. Just a few days ago, we had some guy ram a truck through the gates of the Russian ambassador's residence. Diplomacy, like ambassadors are meant, meant to be about diplomacy and preventing violence, not uh, not being a place where violence takes place. Uh, to think that the Irish government were talking about expelling the ambassador uh, is nuts. And where during the Cold War, during communism, the West used to speak, the West, uh, what an idea, used to talk about uh, that we are of a higher plane of values, that we believed in free speech, in a free press, in a free country, and that we were morally and politically better than the Soviet Union. That was for a reason. Now, uh, we are, after two years of constricting free movement and free speech, and now we've Generally in the West, now the EU has banned the displaying of the media such as Russia Today and Sputnik. So we are left with straight up propaganda where fictional pictures and fictional videos from five or longer years ago from other places are being put forward in the mainstream media as representations of what has just happened in Ukraine have shown to be false. We cannot falsify any uh, media from Russian media because, well, we just haven't seen it, have we? But this hysteria of people being not being able or not being allowed to have a rational discussion about the relationship between Ukraine and Russia is very damaging. We're now at the point of talking about let, let in 100,000 uh, people from the Ukraine into Ireland. What about where can we keep these people? How can we facilitate virtually anybody when there's 9,000 homeless Irish people in the country at, as we speak now? Where are we going to put 100,000 people when so many, when house prices are going through the roof because people can't get housing? Um, talk People talking about we need to let the Ukraine in and Kosovo in and all these different countries in and Georgia in to the EU what about free movement what about the constitutional the political now two weeks ago the vast majority of people in our country knew nothing about either the geography or history of Ukraine and now suddenly everyone's an expert and everyone's got very strong views because well they've only heard one side of the story now I am completely I am in favour of national sovereignty and I am completely opposed to the actions of Mr Putin and Russia going into Ukraine. I'm actually pretty shocked. But for people to say, it, uh, well it just it just happened by chance that maybe Putin is, maybe he just wants to go around and do damage to people, I don't think is correct. In 2014, for those who probably do not know, in 2014, a democratically elected president of Ukraine was ousted in a violent coup. He refused then to sign an EU 
trade agreement. It was ousted in a violent coup by the strong right, uh, very far right uh, groups in Ukraine, and that caused a problem. And in the east of Ukraine, Donbas, etc., uh, since 2014, the Ukrainian state has been bombarding and killing uh, Russia's Russian speakers in that area. Very sad that it's come. Uh, it has come to this. I am very sorry for all the Ukrainians who are ordinary Ukrainians who are suffering. If we look back even further in the history of Ukraine, of course, Kiev and Rus was the beginning of the culture of Russia. And that's there. Actually, the Ukrainians and the Russians have a lot more in common than they do ha have apart. At, at worst, it's kind of cousins fighting each other, if not brothers. It's very sad to see, and I'm very opposed to both the invasion and to what is the violence that is taking place. However, it does not justify this hysterical jumping into the idea of the Ukraine must jo join the EU. What will the cost be? Uh, the EU, Ukraine joining the EU, and then obviously next thing to join in the EU will be joining NATO, and Russia will be completely encircled by NATO missiles, and that is just a recipe for World War III, and it's very dangerous. And of course, given free access to 44 million people to uh, the EU and to Ireland is madness. We cannot as we've been asked to by the politicians in the last few days, we cannot house 100,000 people here. It's crazy. And uh, we've got to stop this hysterical uh, irrationality. And we have to think, well, we've got to start thinking rationally and being aware of all the facts. Now, you can't be aware of all the facts when you're only hearing one biased side of the story. Uh, I was amazed to see that um, they banned Russia Today, it's uh, the EU banned uh, the broadcasting of Russia Today in across the EU there recently. It means you can't hear the other side's propaganda and you can't assess it with your own and see which one you believe, uh, which one is more credible. This is dangerous for everybody because then no one has an idea of what is truly going on. And we certainly don't have the freedom to, to uh, assess argument. I was shocked to see that virtually with no security, a truck, was, a man in a truck was allowed to ram his uh, truck into the gates of the residence of the Russian ambassador there recently. It is very incredible behavior. It is, uh, I understand people are angry and they want to show their anger, but this whole thing of uh, Banging into the ambassador's residence is very... Ambassadors there are to promote diplomacy and talking, not war. And people are going, if they're looking for peace, they're going about it the very wrong way. So, my name is Herman Kelly. I'm, wor I'm worried about the growing hysteria that we have in Ireland. In Ireland, we've seen it with the COVID lockdown. And the, uh, virtually it became a one-party rule state. I've seen it in Limerick there last week, where you have this... Antifa shouting hysterically, shouting like mo mo some of it based on lies, but a lot of it just based on hatred and hysteria. And now, again, within the last few weeks, we see this hysteria about the U Ukraine, uh, an area of which the vast majority of people two weeks ago knew nothing and cared nothing about, and now seemingly they want to go and fight there and, and stuff like that. It's pure madness. So, we need, need to get back to be educate ourselves about the facts and maybe talk rationally about these issues talk about not just about what's happening this week but what are the the long-term consequences of what we're discussing and we need more diversity in the media to give alternative views so we can make up open our mind before we can make up our mind so my name is herman kelly i'm president of the irish freedom party go to Margaretson.